there's a fairly large fraction of low clouds. A large part are responsible for a large part of the cooling uh, caused by these clouds. The reason low clouds are so important is that they actually reflect a lot of the sunlight back into space. I mean, we know them for when we travel in airplanes. These are these monotonic scenes that we see over the oceans. And they are wide because they are reflecting uh, the sunlight back into space. And you can imagine if you change the amount of low clouds, you change the amount of energy that the surface gets. That means that low clouds have a strong cooling effect on the Earth's climate. So if we have more low clouds, climate will become colder. And if we have fewer cosmic rays, we have fewer low clouds, and the Earth becomes warmer. It's, 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 you mean with the ESCO data set? Yeah. It's in the infrared, what we've been looking at. That's interesting. Okay. Well, I first heard about uh, Henrik Svensmark's work when we became interested in looking at how aerosols, or very small particles, are produced in the Earth's atmosphere in the first place. I mean, this is important because all clouds are formed upon aerosol particles that are in the atmosphere. The satellite is looking at a specific parameter. In terms of the work that we've done, what we've found is that the galactic cosmic rays are capable of modulating the aerosols or particles, small particles in the lowest part of the atmosphere. In fact, we can show that the aerosols produced by galactic cosmic rays are significantly modulated in the lower layer which contains these clouds that produce a cooling effect on the earth. What we don't understand at this point is exactly how and why they, they're formed. Every cloud droplet that's formed is formed on a particle initially in the air. And so it's absolutely crucial to understand how these particles come about and what their properties are. Otherwise, we can't ever hope to understand clouds and, and their behavior. And that's where cosmic rays actually might come in. Because what do cosmic rays do when they enter the Earth's atmosphere? They produce small ions. Oh, yes. yes. Uh, so. It is the belief that these small charges help forming these small specks or aerosols in the Earth's atmosphere. Whereas most people would think that since there's water in the atmosphere that naturally there'll be clouds, but that isn't true. The only way that clouds can form in the atmosphere, in our atmosphere, under normal conditions is to condense onto an aerosol or existing particle in the air. Every cloud droplet that's formed is formed on a particle initially in the air. All clouds are formed upon these aerosols. And so it's absolutely crucial to understand how these particles come about and what their properties are. Otherwise, we can't ever hope to understand clouds and, and their behavior. In science, it's not enough just to have a good theory. You also need some experiments to support the ideas. I was very determined to get an experiment that could show that we had this connection between cosmic rays, aerosol formation, and clouds. What I'm going to talk about is cosmic rays. These are particles, are very energetic particles, they enter the Earth's atmosphere and we can actually measure them. So when we have maximum activity, you see that there's not so many cosmic rays coming in to the Earth's uh, atmosphere. That's because now the Sun has a very strong magnetic field and it's difficult for the particles that come from the galactic space to get into uh, the solar system. So there seems to be 
a uh, agreement between changes uh, in solar activity and changes in climate. So what is really needed is some experimental uh, evidence that can say yes or no whether such a relation, I mean, how, how does it really work? That is what is needed. And it's very fortunate that uh, such an experiment seem, uh, looks like will be uh, performed. I, I would like to say I think the experiment is completely misconceived and shows a complete lack of elementary knowledge about <coughs> how clouds behave. So whichever way you look at it, that experiment is completely misconceived and will tell you nothing about what happens in the atmosphere. Well, I, tot I totally disagree, but I should say that the people that are involved there are people that are experts in uh, aerosols and, uh, and atmospheric uh, chemistry, so they, they, they know what they're doing. So, and I, I know, I mean, they, they, they will disagree with your, your point of view, but it, it, it's true there are different uh, views, but you are one extreme, I would say. <laughs>So this whole chamber is built in such a way that we can control ions inside it and uh, we will be able to reveal for the first time how important ions are in the production of forming new aerosols and in the end new clouds. The motivation for doing this experiment has uh, really been uh, trying to understand why there seems to be this relation between solar activity and climate on Earth. All this uh, political turmoil that is surrounding uh, global warming and so on is irrelevant for the, uh, the science. And the kind of experiment that we are doing, I think it's a necessary uh, experiment because it will uh, improve our understanding on one of the most important processes in the atmosphere, which is uh, cloud formation. Originally, I got interested uh, in the topic when a colleague of mine uh, in Germany asked me what are the effects of supernovae on life on Earth. And I decided to give him a serious answer. Uh, what I did, I uh, looked at uh, the literature and eventually uh, stumbled upon uh, Henrik Svensmark's uh, results about uh, cosmic rays and cloud cover. So I realized that uh, if this uh, hypothesis is correct, that uh, cosmic rays affect cloud cover and climate, what it would mean is that also uh, variations which don't originate from the sun, but also variations from the whole Milky Way, they too will affect climate on Earth. Ever since I was a kid, I was uh, interested in astronomy. That's why I became an astronomer. I never realized as a kid, I mean, I always appreciated uh, this Milky Way, the fact that you can go out in a dark uh, night and see this beautiful uh, galaxy that we're 
inside of. It is something that we actually live in. It's part of us and it's affecting us. It's affecting uh, climate here on Earth. And you must take it into uh, account, into consideration, if you want to understand past variations uh, in the climate. What's fascinating is that this Milky Way, which looks something which is very far away, it isn't very far away. We are part of it. And this link between this Milky Way and us is cosmic rays. 